So I think of them in terms of thickness, not of, in terms of length. Like I think of MagSafe 2 as the thinner one because it's, you know, you know what I mean? I have to laugh at what you just- <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Ryan Rampersad so I can share my experiences with the MacBook Air 2017 refresh. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO41. So Ian, I hear that you got a new MacBook Air. Yes, uh, and... The circumstances under which I got this MacBook Air are very important to note here because it's it's uh, abnormal. That sounds right? pretty shady to me. So I work for a school district, SPPS, and they love giving all of the staff uh, MacBooks as, you know, our, our work computers. Seems reasonable. Yep. Uh, we previously had the MacBook Pros, uh, 2000, late 2013 versions of them. Yep. Uh, so that was the 13-inch uh, Retina Display MacBook Pros. Yep. And they, uh, 256 gigabyte storage, by the way. Pretty good. Yep. So they they uh, replaced those uh, just last month with uh, MacBook Airs. 2017 refresh and when i heard that we were getting macbook airs i you know they, they don't tell us very many details right so no, i was trying to figure not. out like okay which macbook air is it you know and i was very surprised to find that there was a 2017 version of the macbook air uh and we'll get into that a little bit later but uh but yeah so so like as we're reviewing this keep in mind that I don't have full admin access to this thing, so I, you know, haven't played around with it nearly as much as I as I normally could with a device. Um, but the uh, the hardware aspects of this, you know, are, are definitely one hundred percent the same. Um, I just can't install everything that I want to. So for pricing and models of this device. There's only two variants on the MacBook Air 2017 version. Uh, it's $1,000 for the version with 128 gigabytes of storage, and it's $1,200 for the 256 gigabytes of storage version. All of the other specs are exactly the same between them. So let's talk about the specs. The screen on both of them is a 13-inch screen. Um, they eliminated the 11, what was it, 11.6-inch? Something like you know, that. Something like that. Um, version and this display is a tn panel it's 1440 by 900 resolution which is definitely not retina which which is the real true reason why it looks horrible yeah and like initially when i when i took a look at these at you know the the specs of of this display i was like it's probably not going to be that bad to look at because i compared the pixel density of it to the pixel density of the monitor that i have at home Mm -hmm. which is this big 27 inch 1440p uh display and they're they're roughly the same pixel density so i figured okay it'll be all right turns out when you're sitting much closer to a laptop display than you do to a desktop display man oh man can you see those pixels yeah it's bad Mm -hmm. it's so bad i hate looking at this computer screen um and the fact that it's a tn panel just makes it even worse because like if i shift around just a little bit like i've got weird dark you know areas on the screen that kind of move around i'm like whoa oh my gosh this would not have happened on the macbook pro that i just came from (sighs) very very sad about that um also important to note when we're talking about the display are the bezels around the display. So the the display, the, the bezels on the MacBook Pro that I came from, beautiful, great. Nice, nice black yeah. bezels. Mm-hmm. The screen went off, just blends right in. Yep, the, the glass that covers the screen is the same as the glass that covers the bezels, you know, so it's all seamless. Yep, looks nice. These bezels on this MacBook Air is... The aluminum, you know, gray, and I think it's, and it, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, and there's, there's a significant indentation, right? The screen is it, it's back clearly behind, behind it, yes. the, yeah, the bezel. You can, you can almost see like when the screen's lit, you can almost see some black part of the screen bordering right yes. behind mm-hmm. the, uh, the aluminum, know, the al- fake aluminum. Yep. And uh, and actually, around the edges of the display, I did I noticed this today for the first time. But there's there's a noticeable kind of gradient where it gets darker 
as you yes. get towards the edge of the display. Mm-hmm. And that's, I hate that. Yeah. So one of my favorite features about the display of the MacBook Air is that if you have a flashlight, mm-hmm. you can shine the Apple on the other side and see through the screen. Oh, yes. That's kind of yeah. fun. It's a fun, fun gimmick. Um, yeah, you know what these puzzles remind me of, actually, is the Samsung Chromebook that I had back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, back in 2012 there or whatever. There it goes. Man, that is, wow, that's really bright. Yeah. The Shining the flashlight through the, the logo. Yep. Yeah, so this, oof, yeah. This display, I'm since we started off with the display, I'm almost hoping that this is going to be the worst part of, of about the, the device um, for its sake. Let's find out. So the next thing that we can talk about is the uh, the the physical, you know, look and feel of yeah. the, the physical build quality, right? So so one of the notable features about the MacBook Air is that it's in this wedge shape. Mm-hmm. So instead of being sort of a rectangle all the way through, yep. it's sort of this like trapezoid almost kind of thing. It's yeah, it's like a triangle thing, which was a really clever th- like move on their part because it it makes it seem razor thin when you're like sitting in front of it. You don't really take into account that like the computer is thicker farther away from you, right? You know, so um, and and I I really really like that tapered design because like it has the the side effect of uh my wrists are not getting bitten whenever i like put my hands on the keyboard to type right whereas on the macbook pro that edge is you know so so much higher than the table that you know my like Mm. arms are resting on yeah that i'm it, it wasn't like a make it or break it kind of problem but like you know it that problem doesn't exist on the macbook air um which i'm really really happy with Weirdly enough, the MacBook Air has a larger footprint than the MacBook Pro. It's wider. Yeah, it's old. Yeah, and and it's when they measured inches differently. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and and so like I didn't realize that this was going to be a problem, but there are several places where I like used to slip the MacBook Pro into that I can't just slip the MacBook Air into very easily because it's that it just 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 that little bit much wider. Yeah, you know. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean the the aluminum unibody like physical design with the light up logo, probably the best design that I have ever seen uh, in a laptop from an aesthetic point of view. Yep. Yeah. And it's important to note that on modern Mac book laptops, mm-hmm. the logo is no longer lit. Right. Now it's just a shiny piece of plastic slash metal. Yeah. Um. Have you ever tried shining a flashlight through that from the back? Uh, I don't have one of those, but uh, it won't work. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to try it just to make sure. Um, you know, one of the interesting things is a, a fun trivia about that logo. In addition to being, you know, light up from mm-hmm. a flashlight, is the the light on the Apple logo on the you know backside of the computer. Yeah, it's lit up by the light that makes the laptop seeable on your screen side. So the same backlight yeah. from the screen. And it's kind of so. clever that they use the same backlight to mm-hmm. do it because. That it may, was there. And it gives it a nice uniform yeah. glow in the logo. Yeah. It's that's a shame nice. they don't do it that's anymore. Nice. Um, but yeah, and it, yeah, it is a shame. I don't think that that's a, like a, it's not a make it or break it problem. No, for but the it, new it's, ones. it's a, it's an Apple thing. You know, it, it's the slow, inevitable deterioration of what we all loved. But at least they're still aluminum unibodies. So the, far. the newer ones. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's talk about the, specs like the technical specs of this uh, of this device you don't have much choice here you've got 1.8 gigahertz uh cpu um i5 8 gigabytes of ram and uh and then you have those two options for how much uh how much storage space you have yep, and, 128 and, those, and, yep, and those are both solid state drives good i believe that the only change here from like the previous macbook air which was like what 2003 14 or something like that or Maybe. whatever is they've just bumped up the clock speed mm-hmm. of the uh, of the processor so i will i will mention that you know in in the legacy of macbook airs there used to be more variety but of course being a legacy product they took the variety away mm-hmm. um originally the macbook air only shipped with four years memory hmm. which was uh kind of bad yeah yeah so at least you're getting something and you don't have to upgrade for another 200 dollars. so that's nice mm-hmm. um but but as you note here, 
that storage is just nowhere to be seen. Yeah, no, I, I, so coming from a 256 gigabyte laptop, I was very frequently having to clear stuff off of, off of that device in order to, you know, maintain. And, and a lot of that I think was because, yes, I did have several like video projects that I had stored on there and, you know, like whatever my current podcast, you know, episode was, was on there. Um, but uh like i don't know how i'm going to live with 128 yeah it's, with half it, as much it's storage tough. when i bought my macbook air in 2011 you know back when they didn't even have a 500 gigabyte option mm-hmm. uh, they would only had 128 and 256 yeah and i didn't buy the 256 one i bought a better processor instead okay. and um so i lived with 128 gigs and it was okay at the time because i wasn't doing video and stuff i was just going to school and doing code mm-hmm. um Takes up a lot less space, turns out. It well, it did back then, but now, uh, you know, uh, you can tune into the fringe to hear more about this if you want. But, you know, we we have talked at work about computers and you know giving them to people. And today's code requirements, you know, a single project can be three hundred megs at least. Mm-hmm. So it's not something you want to be limited in. Nice. Uh, you yeah. want you want as much storage as you can afford for the next five years mm-hmm. instead of just today. Yeah, it, it reminds me of back when I bought the NVIDIA Shield tablet and I made the mistake of buying the 16 gigabyte version even though there was a 32 gigabyte yeah. version available. It's just like yeah. that. Yeah. Except the computer is way be- way better than that. Y- yes. <laughs> oh, man. Battery life is really, really good. Uh, I've, I have forgotten to charge it overnight a couple of times. Like, usually my, my laptop habit is plug it in overnight no matter how much battery life it yeah, has left, right? That's fair. And uh, today is one of those days, and I'm at twenty uh, percent right now. Not bad. So, and it's yeah, five o'clock in the evening, five thirty in the evening. Um, I haven't had it's it it's been off of its uh, charger since six o'clock yesterday morning. Yep. Yep. So I, I um now note note that this is not the only computer that I use when I'm right. in my office. You know, I use the desktop. You know, so. So it's it the MacBook Air battery has been legendary. Uh, my 2011 MacBook Air was um, like six to seven hours of battery mm-hmm. life, which is great, you know, for a computer back in 2011. Mm-hmm. That was cutting it. <laughs> and and now these can get you know 13 to 14 hours of battery life. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. And it's funny that Apple doesn't have a computer that can do that anymore in the you know, in the modern lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and the first yeah. the first laptop that I had that had really good battery life was that Samsung Chromebook, yeah. and um and I attribute a lot of that to the fact that it it you know was running on tablet architecture, yeah. so it it had no moving parts, it didn't have mm-hmm. anything any of that to worry about. Um, actually, now that I now that I'm thinking about moving parts, uh, the fan of course is the only moving part in the MacBook Air. That's right. And there have been a couple of times where I wasn't really doing anything super strenuous on it but that you know that fan kicked in and it was like where are you running chrome making quite well of course I'm oh always that running was chrome. your problem i'm always running that chrome. was your mistake yeah that's so, my that, chrome is my platform i understand however chrome is extraordinarily bad at power management mm-hmm. and it will destroy your battery life and your fan quietness yeah yeah yep yep uh let's talk about some ports is there an audio jack Yes, there is, uh, and I believe it's you know one of those. Where was the courage in 2011? I, I believe it's one of those uh, combination headphone yes. microphone uh, jacks. Yep. yep. It has uh, two USB 3.0 ports, Whoa. one on each side. Yeah. Why does this computer sound more modern than the current modern lineup? We'll get to that in a minute. Hmm. Uh, it has a mini display port with Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 2.0 uh, over on the right-hand side of the computer, um, which I'm going to have to get used to because I used to always plug in my VGA adapter on the left-hand side of the of course. MacBook Pro. Yeah. So that's a minor thing. Um, and it still has an SD card reader. Woohoo! Woo-hoo! Good. Uh, very, very, very good because I take Do a that. lot of pictures. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what kind of charger does this use? It uses the MagSafe 2. MagSafe 2, that's the Mm -hmm. longer one. What do you mean longer one? Well, the MagSafe 1 was stubbier. So, I think of them in terms of thickness, not in terms of length. Like, I think of MagSafe 2 as the thinner one because it's, you know, you know what I mean? I have to laugh at what you (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. Yeah. And 
so I'm I'm a little bit conflicted about this whole mag. I'm, I'm a lot conflicted about this whole MagSafe thing because, like, I would love to have a Chrome or a MacBook with USB C charging. Really want it. Because then I would be able to have one cord that can just you know I can plug my phone into it. I can plug my laptop into it. Whatever you know, and and I'm much more likely. I'm I'm pretty likely to be able, like just be somewhere and be like oh a USB C cord cool I'll plug my laptop into it right um, you could argue that like MagSafe has been around for a long time so I I am likely to run into it places but like I like outside of being at SPPS things I haven't encountered MagSafe twos just out there in the wild for me to just use so is that because I don't understand why like do you don't go places where there's a lot of MacBook users I think it's more that the MacBook users don't bring their chargers with them oh okay know? that's that's plausible yeah so I bring my MacBook pro with me pretty much everywhere mm-hmm. um, and I bring its charger cable and brick with me everywhere okay um, but I also have a charger brick for my desk upstairs that's always fixed to it. Okay. Um, so I'm not one of those people, mm-hmm. but I totally get why they don't necessarily bring it. Right, right. Yeah. And I and, and I think that like the whole MagSafe 2 and Thunderbolt 2.0 thing is why SPPS specifically made the choice to get this MacBook Air instead of like the MacBook 1 or one of the oh, newer MacBook Pros. Because like... So the Mac, the MagSafe 2 side of it is really silly because like we all had to hand back our old MagSafe 2 chargers should and have, then you get should have new said you ones. Lost it. And well <laughs> and so like SPPS isn't keeping any of those. They you know, know. like it it's not like having a bunch of MagSafe 2s laying around was their reason f- a legitimate reason for getting this one. Um however like having a bunch of adapters for thunderbolt 2.0 over display port mini display port you know yeah. that's that's what everybody already has in the schools for you know plugging into the um projectors and yeah. um and actually there there was enough of a hullabaloo with like the teachers who have projectors that use hdmi mm-hmm. because the um macbook pros had HDMI ports on them. Right. And so those teachers didn't need adapters, and now they do need adapters. And so... Oh, that's interesting. It, you know... I oh, guess I never realized... Oh, no, I gotta buy one. It, and, and I'm, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, just use your budget. It costs like $30. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... it's Well, I guess we can talk about that after, but I think it's interesting that um, there was that much concern... Second Opinion is supported only by listeners like you, who voluntarily donate on our Patreon. Money we make through Patreon will go towards buying products to review and improving the quality of the show. Our content has always been released for free, and always will be, but if you want to go that extra mile, you can get cool rewards like access to The Fringe, our behind-the-scenes after show, access to polls to help us choose future products to review, access to show docs as we're working on them, Nexus stickers, and your name shouted out right here on the show. Not to mention, you will have my eternal gratitude. So if you're interested in helping us take this to the next level, join us at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Again, that's patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Let's talk about that keyboard. So best keyboard ever. I was I was expecting it to be the exact same keyboard as the MacBook Pro that I was coming from, but it does feel different. I can, I you know, I, I can tell it, it it has less, or re, yeah, it has less resistance than the MacBook Pro's keyboard. Okay. Um, and I would rate this, obviously this is very subjective, but I would rate the MacBook Air's keyboard as like the third best keyboard that I've ever used on a laptop. Mm-hmm. Um, now, all of the laptops that I'm about to name have the same kind of chiclet style, yeah. you know, like separated keys, very flat. Mm-hmm. Um, the Sony Vio laptop that I had in high school, I think, has the best uh, keyboard that I've ever used, followed by the MacBook Pro that I came from, the 2013 MacBook Pro. Um, then this MacBook Air has a pretty good one. And then the uh, Samsung Chromebook uh, that I had. And and I would, like, 
considering that that was a $250 laptop, you know, at like in 2012 or whatever, yeah. like that was amazing. Mm-hmm. That was an amazing keyboard. Um, and then below that is the 2017 MacBook Pro because I just, oh, I do not like those low travel. Don't what, worry. What are they called? Butterfly switches? Yes. Yeah. Nobody likes the keyboard. Yeah. Every day, a hundred people Twitter at Apple and say how much they hate it. <laughs> um, one of the things I'll praise the keyboard for mm-hmm. um, is that it's backlit. Yes. Oh, yes. And not only is it backlit, it's not just backlit on and off. You can go from very low backlighting to very high backlighting. And even though the backlight will shine through the edges of the keycaps, Mm -hmm. in addition to through the letters, of course, Mm -hmm. it still looks really beautiful. Um, I agree. Whereas some uh, backlit keyboards will only be on and off. And then Mm -hmm. they will have such an absurd, uneven lighting that it looks hilarious. Yeah. And like once you have once once you've had a laptop with a backlit keyboard, you can't go back to to having a regular one. No, I can type without looking at the keyboard. That's no problem for me. But yeah. I need to see it when I set my hands down. Sure. So yeah. there's that. However, I I just I cannot forgive Apple for their non-standard button layout. Now of you have the to keyboard. tell me what non-standard means. I here. mean the command button and having an option button and a you know the fun, you know, I need I need control. The super button, alt, and then spacebar. But you got an extra button. That's what I need. I, I can't. I I never know what to do with that extra button. Everything. It's <laughs> learn to live your life properly. That extra nope. button will save lives. Mm-mm. Are you talking about the function button? I don't know. Or are you talking about the option button? I don't, I don't know. know. I can't even. I've been using you know MacBook since I started working at SPPS in 2015, and I still can't match up like the on the screen symbols, kim- symbols oh, I, with what which keyboard so button it is. it is it is so strange to me that a apple doesn't i don't know put like they have the symbol for the command key on the key mm-hmm. why isn't the symbol for the other things on the other keys right right or b at least sell stickers for twenty dollars mm-hmm. they can get free money <laughs> and they can help me uh yeah and um and it's it's just like it's so I don't yeah. have a problem with their non-standard keyboard layout. In fact, I love their non-standard keyboard layout, and I'll, many of the keyboards I have in the house now use the non-standard keyboard layout because I only use it with a Mac. I because this is the one true operating system, and so we shall embrace it. No, yeah, but but every single other operating system uses the same keyboard layout, the same keyboard shortcuts. You know, that's because I, those systems aren't deeply integrated why, with the hardware. Why do I have to memorize two different sets? Don't, of keyboard don't shortcuts. Don't only use this one. Mm 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 mm. No. This is this is the better. I can't use a 128 gigabyte well, laptop as my only computing device, that, Ryan. That, that is pretty unfortunate. That's ridiculous. I, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a very light wet laptop. <laughs> it's it's its weight is very good. Is it? Uh, yes. <laughs> How good? Um, is it like two pounds? Is that so? That what I've heard. So I I can't really compare like. The problem with this is that in between getting having the MacBook Pro and getting this MacBook Air, Three pounds. I also switched from like biking around with a backpack on my back to biking around with a cargo rack behind me, mm-hmm. you know? And so I can't really tell you how it compares there. <laughs> so I um had a MacBook Air in college mm-hmm. and I carried it around in my bag all mm-hmm. the time. I carry this new MacBook Pro in my bag all the time. And this is the massive, like, 15-inch MacBook Pro, right? It is. And I I think this is maybe four pounds. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know, four and a half. It's not, it's not worse enough to complain. Okay. So I, I don't think it's a problem. I Yeah, I've been pretty spoiled, you know, when I went from having a big, giant gaming, you know, 16-inch laptop or whatever it was to a you know the samsung chromebook and you know now the macbook air like i don't think i could ever go back to having a a large laptop oh no of course not i mean that's how the industry moved too this is this is the future by far yeah yep yep and i mean and i categorize that 15 inch macbook pro right there as a large laptop (laughs) by the way hey um can you tell me about the camera Eh. Hmm. that bad huh it i mean to be fair it's a webcam on a laptop I don't from u- Apple. I don't use it for anything, so I'm not expecting it to be a great webcam. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's 720p. It's so that photo it, booth has something to use. It's pretty, you know. I've I've used it for a video call once so far. You know, yeah. like it looked okay. Um, 
it it's it's in a good spot on the on the laptop. Well, look at which that. Is, Apple's is, getting something right that Dell can't even figure out. Which is something that we do have to talk about now <sighs> since, you know, we've got all of these like bezel-less uh, laptops where they put the the uh, webcam down at the bottom. My favorite, my personal favorite is the one that like hides the camera under a key on the keyboard yes, and then it pops, pops up. Yep. Now, I think that's a novel design uh, and I, I, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So tell me about the software. So the operating system. It's um, got to be pretty similar to the other one, right? What do you mean? I mean, this one can't have a different Mac OS. Well, uh, since I can't update anything on my own without going to Bill, our building you know, tech guy, um, my old laptop was still on El Cap, I think. El Capitan. I, I don't know what these names uh, are. And so now we're on uh, High Sierra, uh, which I think is like two, at least two years newer than Cap. I think that's right. Yeah. And I'm really liking it. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you any specific features yet that come with High Sierra that I didn't have access to back then. Um, I can tell you that I, for the very first time, got a notification saying, hey, you're opening Audacity. That's a 32-bit program, Ooh. and that's not going to work in the next version, so you'd better... That's spooky. Yeah. Uh, so I have been warned. I've been duly warned. Um, yeah, I mean, Mac OS is nice. It's not my favorite operating system. Um, blasphemy. It's Windows is still my favorite operating Double system. Double blasphemy. And... Um, it's, but you know, it's not like a problem. I still, you know, I still have uh, virtual desktops. I still have, you know, s- like side by I okay the side by side like full screen apps in Mac OS is atrocious. Like, right? It's yeah. It's it's it's, it's completely inhumane and it, unusable. It's nowhere near usable as good like in terms of windows management as windows does capital totally agree yeah it's a good thing there are utilities that you can install oh oh i can't darn (laughs) yeah yeah um yeah very occasionally you'll find something that is like only available on windows you know that's not available on mac os that's very very rare though um or an equivalent at least yeah see the problem is that one of those rare occasions is construct which is the program that we use in my game design class to make our games so i can't do any grading for that class when i'm on my macbook for school so one of the annoying things is um so you probably don't use paint much in your day-to-day uh, not a whole lot day-to-day windows life but 3d paint is pretty cool though i'm sure it is except it's spyware and malware um but beside that, I think it's interesting that there's no free built-in paint-like tool in OS X. Hmm. And it's always bothered me. And it's really annoying when you... I mean, you can crop and stuff with a preview. Right. But you can't, like, mark up with a circle something. And it's just not... You know, every time that I accidentally open something in preview, I, like, punch myself and then, you know, force quit it. <laughs> I don't like preview. Okay. I don't like it. That's very violent. I don't like when it appears. (laughs) Very bitter. Um, So how's the performance on this little MacBook Air? So I was expecting, given that it, you know, is a, like, has the same specs as a, you know, much older MacBook Air, just with a bumped up uh, CPU. Yeah. uh, I was expecting to be very, very unhappy with its performance, but it's been going really well. Um, it's, It's actually outperforming my old macbook pro like noticeably that's very strange i think though that it's because my old macbook pro was a really weird situation okay there was something up with that particular instance Mm. that i had um and and the the evidence that i have for that is whenever i handed my macbook pro to bill for him to like update something or do whatever he would always he like within five seconds he would just look at me and go what did you do to this like what's wrong with this? And I'd go, I don't know. Uh, like, I don't, what, what? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So like my MacBook Pro was also not acting like the MacBook Pros that he was used to dealing with. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's amazing that it has uh, better performance. So. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if that continues after I get him to install like the really old copy of Adobe. Uh, creative suite yeah creative suite yeah uh like 5.5 or whatever they have sure. licenses for it as pps yeah 
Um, cause I, I, that, that's what I kind of suspect was the, uh, the thing that was making it weird. It happens. Yeah. So what are your final thoughts? So my final thoughts is that this is a really weird, really weird laptop for Apple to be selling. I like, I was really surprised to find out that they had a 2017 refresh of the MacBook Air mm-hmm. because when did the MacBook one first come out? That was several years before. I thought it was 2015. I think it was 15, yeah. Yeah. And and that, like, very clearly, in terms of physical form factor, right, is supposed to be the replacement for the MacBook Air. So it's funny because it's only the replacement in terms of physical form factor. Right. Um, Spec-wise, it's inferior. Port-wise, it's inferior. Really? Um, Spec-wise? Yeah, so it uses Core M, which is a crippled chip there's no no doubt about it um the fact that these macbook airs come with eight gigs of memory screen wise right it's a retina yes like the macbook air here is the only non-retina laptop that they're still selling in 2017 2018 right yeah so so barely any like so this is obviously an aberration in the in the lineup because Mm -hmm. it's still being sold it came out years and years ago Mm -hmm. um but the whole lineup kind of doesn't make sense right now to be Mm -hmm. honest um and maybe by the time we do another MacBook style review on some MacBook that appears in the next some period of time, mm-hmm. we'll be able to say more clearly what the lineup looks like and how things make sense. Mm-hmm. And right now, none of it makes sense. Okay. So why why don't the MacBook Pros that they have with the touch bar and everything, why don't those make sense? Okay. So, for example, the uh, cheap MacBook Pro mm-hmm. that they have right mm-hmm. now. Without the touch bar. Without the touch bar is $1,300. That's one hundred dollars more than the highest priced MacBook Air. Yeah, that's basically the MacBook Air. Then mm-hmm. they could just t- they could just take off a hundred dollars and say, hey, "Okay, we're done with the MacBook Airs. Buy this MacBook." Right. Done. Mm-hmm. Problem solved. Because then it ha- it's almost a one for one lineup almost. Mm-hmm. But then there are no actual ports on those thirteen inch. Right. And you only get two uh, Thunderbolt uh-huh. three ports. Uh huh. That's it. Yeah. Now it can't be the MacBook. Because that only has one port, and it has a crippled processor, and barely mm-hmm. exists. The MacBook Airs, uh, you know, at least you know in the old days, you can get an i7. You can't now. Um, maybe you can through customization or something. I, don't I know. doubt it. I didn't see anything on there um, on Apple's own website. So, so when you when you look at that product, it doesn't make any sense because the MacBook Air is more capable in terms of performance and capability, and even the size might even be better because the 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 keyboard's good whereas the MacBook 1 has the um butterfly switches of course yeah so like the whole lineup is sort of kind of ups and downs like mm-hmm. there's pros and cons of every there's, single thing yeah, right there's there's and, no single and laptop you, that is better than every other one in exactly. every way and then when you not only that when you come with a specific use case for example i'm a software engineer i need a computer from apple which one should i buy well none of them okay great that sucks um so the whole lineup doesn't make any sense right now. I'd, I think, um, you know, the MacBook Air is kind of this legacy product because it's sold so well mm-hmm. and the factories are still there. Why turn them off? Like, people still buying them. Yeah, but if you're going to continue to sell them, like, why not go the full mile and give it a decent screen and give, because, it, because give it an updated that, that CPU? That product already exists. It's the 13-inch MacBook Pro with no touch bar. Okay, yeah. So what is the MacBook One? It it it's um it's, <laughs> it's a computer that is for on the go ness and not software engineering and not really you know photoshopping and video editing. Mm-hmm. It's really the the netbook style computer for Apple. Right. Except that it's how expensive is it? Thousand dollars. Yeah. Call back. Oh my gosh. And I think there's a you know twelve ninety nine model also. Mm-hmm. Like and and I think that's another problem that Apple feels right now at least. Um, that their their price umbrella is so wide, and they want to keep yes. The, the MacBook One starts at thirteen hundred dollars. Holy moly! Okay, none of this makes any yeah. sense. So so again, the price umbrella is so wide, and they want to keep margins on some of these products that they're you know luxurious forty three percent or whatever it is that they have no choice but to sell worse products for higher prices. <laughs> So who knows? Oh, boy. Oh, mm-hmm. boy. So don't buy a MacBook right now? I mean, if you have to buy one for work, buy one. But then tell your workplace the second 
Apple releases a new one that if they don't buy one, you're leaving. <laughs> like you, you just have to. Yeah. No. And I'm so so when I got that MacBook Pro in 2015, I was like, okay, I guess like as long as I work for SPPS, I won't ever have to like buy myself a laptop. You yeah, know, that's cool. Personally, um, and you know, getting these MacBook Airs with a 128 gigabyte, you know, I'm getting closer and closer to just being like, oh gosh, I do need to buy myself my own laptop. Yeah. And so I'm a software yeah. engineer and Doherty actually provides my laptop, mm-hmm. but even I say the same thing and it's not because this is a bad computer in any way. This, this is the 2013 15 inch MacBook pro. Mm-hmm. This is a wonderful computer, but I can't keep waiting for, you know, Doherty to buy me a new one right. in the future. I just need to just be able to own it myself and maintain mm-hmm. it and take care of it. So yeah, I agree. It's a weird world we're living in right now. It is. Yeah. It's the weird world where Apple has worse computers and Windows computers are sure looking really good, but man, they sure are <laughs> running Windows. And, you know, so the the rumors recently that, that have come out that the Chromebook Pixel uh, is, might, or I'm sorry, the Pixelbook, that's what they're called now, the Pixelbook, uh, you know, might allow dual booting, you know, of Windows. I was like, oh, hey, that would just be like the perfect computer for me. So we'll see how that goes. And that would be like, what a strange world that would be where where the Chromebook option is like the one that I, you know, can can look at and say, like, there there is nothing about this that like is, you know, it's the best computer for me, even though yada, yada, yada. Right. You know, if if I can install full Windows on it, then there is no even though. So my concern with the Chromebook, and then what's the what's the Google branded version called? Pixelbook. Pixelbook. So my problem with that is they're really expensive. Oh, of course. And not like like you know thirteen hundred dollars expensive, but like two thousand dollars expensive at the top end. Oh, at the top end. Okay. Yeah, which is of course the computer you're going to get, right? Of course. I mean, you know, seriously. Um. So that that means that it's more expensive than it needs to be for what you're getting because you're getting a Chromebook. I mean, sure, if you boot Windows, I mean, you might as well just have bought a Surface at that point. Except that the Surface can't run Android apps uh, nearly as well as the Pixelbook does. Yeah, but why would you want to run apps? Like, what app? Let, let's get into that in a later The Extra Dimension episode, okay. perhaps. Oh, I see. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So the uh, Pixelbook starts at uh, $1,000. For an i5, 8 gigs of RAM. And that's 128 gigs SSD. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Oh, if I want to get everybody, a, if I want to get a decent amount of storage with 512, you know, then it's plus $650. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. How, how much is that up to now? 1649. Right. And then after tax, it's like 1900. It's like $2,000. <laughs> it's painful. Oh, boy. And so nobody makes a good computer right now. Isn't it bizarre? Mm hmm. No. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, time to get a desktop. I guess, yeah. and just cart it around with you. Mm-hmm. Just be like Matt and just screw some handles in. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thank you for joining us for this review of the MacBook Air and a, and an overview of the uh, laptop line. Is this the first laptop that we've ever reviewed on Second Opinion? I think it might be. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. We don't buy laptops very frequently. Turns out, um, if you want to discuss this episode of Second Opinion with other listeners, you can do that on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash TV. That serves as our official comment section. If you have suggestions for other things that we can uh, review, typically we do, you know, electronic gear here. If you have a laptop that you'd like to send us to review, don't don't hesitate. Or if you have a laptop that you use that you want to come on as a guest to review, you know, that would be good as well. Uh, You can get in touch with us on Twitter at The Nexus TV or through email at TheNexusTV at gmail.com. Ryan, where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course, on my website, RyanRappersAid.com. And I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck, or links to other stuff that I make is at uh, IanRBuck.com. Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to take any part of this episode and use it however you want, as long as you link back to thenexus.tv slash SO41. And remember, no matter where you're listening, subscribe to Second Opinion in your favorite podcast player to hear new episodes of the show as soon as they come out. 
Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good one. Have a good one.